From deep in the Burbank Media District, it's time for another edition of My Burbank Talks, presented by the staff of My Burbank. Now, let's see what's on today's agenda as we join our program. Hi, My Burbank reporter Ashley Erickson here with another episode of Women of Burbank. And today my guest is Mary Ann Bean, a dynamic entrepreneur and dedicated community leader that has made a significant impact on the real estate industry in the Burbank area. Thank you for being here. And I want to, first of all, thank you. You've been a longtime sponsor of the Women of Burbank podcast show. So now I get to have you here and be a part of it and see where the magic happens. And thank you uh, personally. So thank you. You're very welcome. I love to support all things Burbank. So when I saw this and saw that you were featuring women of Burbank specifically, I thought, what a great cause and what a great thing to sponsor because the women in Burbank are phenomenal. There's some pretty incredible women. I mean, we've had, you know, people that study cougars to, you know, liquor stores to, you know, Mexican restaurants. It's so wide range, and we're only just breaking the surface of the amazing women here. So yeah, I excited agree. to have you as another amazing Thank woman you. of Burbank. <laughs> so first, just tell me a little bit where you're from, how long you've been in Burbank, a little bit about your family. Sure. Um, born and raised in San Diego, and then I moved to L.A. <laughs> you left the beach? <laughs> I left the beach. <laughs> no, uh, born and raised in San Diego. I lived there until I was in my early 20s, and then I left and went to culinary school in San Francisco. And then when I graduated from there, I moved to Burbank with my husband, who um, had a television career, and we've never left. It's amazing. We've raised two kids here, and it's been great. Yeah. And um, what was your first um, feeling about Burbank when you first came here? Was it different than San Diego? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's so different. Um, <laughs> two things. One was I got lost everywhere I went. Mm. Because there's so many similar named streets, you know, so it yeah. just was so between North Hollywood and here, I thought, but I'm still on Magnolia. <laughs> and then you're like in Sherman Oaks I'm and you just Sherman keep going. Oaks, right? <laughs> so, and that was before cell phones. So it was just yeah. really, I had to like yeah. use my wits. Anyway, um, and the second thing was, I lost my train of thought. Um, what did you ask me? But ask it again. Just the difference between oh, the difference and here, was, what the oh. first thing, your first thoughts were. How interesting people were mm. and not interesting, like intriguing, but interesting, like in San Diego, everybody's so laid back and chill and just wanting to like, they're just friendly and yeah. smiley, you know, and then I moved to LA and and I'm not, I don't mean it's so much about Burbank, but just LA in general. You can't just smile at people on the street. And you're crazy. They think you're crazy. <laughs> they think you're going to mug them. They're just like, yeah. Oh, hey, weirdo. Why are you being nice so to me? <laughs> so. And it's like the hustle and bustle, right? Everything is just so quick paced, especially with so the media industry. fast. Oh, yeah. my God. I really had to, like, speed up my life yeah, to yeah. move here. Yeah. It's funny. <laughs> well, you have been here for a long time, and you've really invested into Burbank. You put your roots here. You put your family here. And one thing that I wanted to talk about was that you were a Girl Scout leader for 13 years. Yeah. So were you a Girl Scout as a child? Nope. No. So your kids were interested, your girls were interested, and you wanted to be involved in it? I don't know that my kids were interested, because they were young, you mm -hmm. know, like first and second grade. Um, my oldest daughter, anyway. I think I was interested in it for her, mm -hmm. and I attended a meeting, and then I was coerced into being a leader because they just didn't have enough, right? That's so, how it works, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So I started a troop, and it was amazing. I loved all the little kids, and I got to know some of the girls and their mm -hmm. parents, and we all became friends. We're still friends to this day. Yeah. And then um, as our troop got, grew and the girls grew, I merged with another leader, Geraldine Walters, who's still one of my very best friends. And um, we had a phenomenal group of girls that graduated at Girl Scouts. And I couldn't so be they more went proud of them. All the way through. All the way through. Mm -hmm. Not all the girls. You know, they yeah, leave and they come and they go, yeah. whatever. But the girls that graduated with us yeah. are phenomenal young women. One's a commercial airline pilot. One's an archaeologist. Wow. One works with the airlines as an airline stewardess. I don't think we use that word anymore. Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't know. Flight attendant? <laughs> Flight attendant. Thank you. <laughs> you know, and... Just a wide range of professions yeah. that are all very successful, and I'm very, yeah. very proud of them. I was a Girl Scout growing up. I went right through on. the whole thing, daisies, brownies, juniors, cadets, seniors. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I finished my gold project. I know I did my silver. Silver, is that what they're called? Like yeah, silver, bronze, silver, and gold. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so how has 
the Girl Scouts troop impacted you and the girls just through volunteerism in Burbank? And what things have you done around this city as a troop? Um, how does it impacted me? And it, it's just a point of pride. Mm -hmm. You know, it's something really just to step back and go, wow, I've helped create these amazing, strong women, you know, because now they're women. I have girls that have moved to New York and they're working in marketing and they're living on their own and they're just, they're, and they're 25 years old. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. So it's been a, it's been a really honor. It's an, it's an honor, I guess, yeah. you know, to yeah. watch this stuff happen. And then the, the impact that our girls had on the city was pretty cool. We were the first troop to introduce reusable shopping bags before reusable shopping bags were a thing in the grocery oh. stores. Before the state said you have to use them or you're going to get charged, you know. So our girls did a huge recycle project in Burbank. They recycled enough recyclables to um, be able to purchase these bags. They designed the design and then they went to the Arts Day on San Fernando mm -hmm. and passed them out for free to the entire community. I think they gave them out over 1,500 of them. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Do you still have that bag? I still have one. <laughs> It's pretty amazing because I know they fall apart pretty quickly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, the, it was it was very impressive. Yeah. You know, they were very yeah. conscious of their surroundings yeah. and what was going on in the world. And it was something that was important to them. So they were one of the first people to do that in this town. It was really, really cool. Yeah, it's such a great program. And I just remember those badges and, you know, really learning in-depth details about your community and civil service and, and the camping trips. Oh, my gosh, you know, Catalina and all these things. Did you guys do a lot of camping trips? We did a lot of hosting of trips. Mm. So our troop was a big money-earning troop. We had a very strong ethic, which was if you want to play hard, you have to work hard. And our girls understood it 100%. So they did anything and everything they could to earn money to do the things they wanted mm -hmm. to do. So we would host encampments for a whole weekend, like three days. And we'd invite troops from all over L.A. And they would come and we'd put them through obstacle courses and teach them the eight wow. basic camping skills and feed them for three days. And it was incredible. And we'd have two or three hundred kids there. Wow. That's yeah. incredible. That is really incredible. Yeah, it was really cool. Are you missing cookie season? Not at all. <laughs> Not one single, yeah, I have not eaten it. one Girl Scout cookie they make you in sick. years. <laughs> What's your favorite? None. I don't None? Like you don't like them at all? I can't. Oh, I gotta throw out to the Samoa. <laughs> that one's so good. <laughs> it is the season right now. Yes. They're at every is. grocery store, bank, yeah. corner of Portos. There, You can't turn a corner without finding them. I have a specific set of girls that I donate to and I just give them my money because I don't want the cookies mm -hmm. and I don't have anybody to give them to. So yeah. I'm just like, I don't want them. <laughs> my money that's fine <laughs> well you were you're also were the president of the bourbon coordinating council which is a huge job so tell me a little bit about that organization and how did was this an overlapping was this after being a girl scout leader and then you moved on to this job so how we discovered bcc was through girl scouts okay the then president, Janet Deal, came, spoke to the troops, and asked us to support their holiday basket program, which my girls were all about. So we would sponsor families and do our holiday baskets. And that was our first endeavor into BCC as volunteers. We would do the holiday basket program. And we did that throughout Girl Scouts. So for years and years, right? And then when I got done with Girl Scouts, I was kind of, what am I going to do? I need something to do for nonprofit. I want to contribute so I thought well I'll be a volunteer for BCC so I went and I spoke with Janet and I started volunteering and then before I knew it I was on the board and then before I knew it I was president that's how it works right yep <laughs> can't put your foot in the door <laughs> something always happens like that every time as so. a PTA president right now I know exactly that feeling <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah it's always more than you sign up for yeah. right yeah. but I think you have to have that expectation yeah. But the two years that I was president were a great two years. I had a f great board. These people were very supportive and um, almost, well, I don't want to say single-handedly, but Hildy Garcia, who's a teacher in Burbank and an amazing woman, and I worked very closely together and we redesigned the entire holiday basket program, wow. made it paperless, mm -hmm. took everything online. And we just got such great feedback from the sponsors and from the families that were involved. It was it was great. Yeah. So we revamped holiday baskets together. And that's probably the most proud thing that I did. 
other than these holiday, and just for people that aren't, don't know what those baskets are, those are for families in need during the holidays. You guys put together baskets of like toiletries and food and presents too. So we do, um, we serve all the low income families in Burbank, as many that apply, right? So one year we might have 300, another year we might have 500, just depends on what the need is. Mm -hmm. Every single family gets gifts for every member of the family that's in the household. And then they get at least two weeks worth of non-perishable foods to get wow. them through the holidays. And really what it's about isn't giving them a holiday. It's about giving them the opportunity to provide a holiday for their family and still be able to pay their rent and their bills. Because we all know holidays are expensive. It costs a lot of money. Let's get them through the holiday season yeah. so that we can make a burden a little less for them. that stress off of them. 100%. Yeah. Other than the baskets, what else does BCC do? Funny, right? Because yeah. everybody's like, oh, holiday I just, baskets. I know the baskets yeah. very well. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But I'm sure there are more than that. So in 1933, BCC was developed or created, founded. And it was to help coordinate within the community between all the different services that can be provided for non or low-income families, right? It kind of fell off through the years. It's been 91 years. So, of course, things change or they get forgotten and, you know, stuff kind of happens. But the original job was to coordinate for these families and help them find resources. Um, the other program that we do that we still have intact is our campership program. And what we do is we reach out to all the families that we serve and we provide these kids with a $300 voucher that will get them through at least one session of a summer camp. Oh, okay. So Boy Scout Camp, Burbank Parks and Rec, YMCA, Boys and Girls Club, Camp Edwards up in the San Bernardino Mountains. And there's four, uh, I always want to call it Forest Lawn, but it's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that's not a Forest camp. Home. <laughs> that's a way different camp. <laughs> They're dying to get in. <laughs> Start them young. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, I think it's called Forest Home. Anyway, so there's a wide range of camps that we work with, and they all work with us on our voucher program. And so the family will register, and we'll send them information, and then they ask for the voucher to get paid, and that's how we pay it. That's awesome. Yeah. So it's like you've got a little bit of the summer, you've got the holidays. It really kind of covers a, a lot of the year for families that are in need. Correct. And then throughout the year, we just kind of – we hold association meetings, so the people who belong to BCC as members come to association meetings, and we have speakers that come from all different aspects of the city to mm -hmm. talk and, and, and educate our members. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. So you, you've you done all this volunteerism, but you also work. You do have jobs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're not just a, giving all your time. But before we get into your career as a real estate agent, um, I want to talk about the incredible paths you've had before that, oh, like a, lot. a chef and a personal trainer and a corporate liaison for the Metropolitan Water District and overseeing an online travel magazine, all very different things. And I'm so <laughs> excited to go into every single one of them. Um, so let's start with your career as a personal chef, because you did mention you went to culinary school. I did. So tell me about, you know, your background, what got you into it, and then, you know, what led to becoming a chef? Um, so I come from a big Italian family. All we do is eat and cook, mm -hmm. just what we do. So I've cooked my whole life. You know, there was a summer where all I did was cook dinner for my family because I was the one home, right? So I've always cooked. It just felt, felt like a natural thing to go into. So I went to school in San Francisco at the California Culinary Academy, and I graduated. And then I started my internship with um, John Furneaux, who was one of the executive chefs for the Patina Group mm -hmm. at Gower Sunset Studios. It was their restaurant there. And I started my internship and I just loved the company so much and I loved working there that I started to work through all the different restaurants that they had in their group. And then I landed in their catering kitchen. Oh, okay. And I worked there for a long while. Um, and I just loved every aspect of it because we did some really cool stuff. Like we worked everything from for Barbara Streisand to. Oh, wow movie premieres and private Beverly Hill home, like small mm -hmm. dinner things. It was just cool. It wasn't like your typical, like we didn't cater weddings. Yeah. You know, we catered a lot of like Special Actors Guild stuff. stuff. Yeah. And really cool. We did the Emmys, really, That's really amazing. fun, cool things. Yeah. So we did that. And then um, I got pregnant with my first daughter and I worked all the way until I was eight or nine months pregnant. And then that was enough. 
and I had my kid and I stayed home with her for about a year. That's awesome. Yeah. And what was your, did you have like a specialty? Were you like better at baking or things like that? Like, what was your favorite? So I went to culinary school to become a baker. Oh, okay. I love baking a pastry. I got bamboozled and sold the entire program. <laughs> <laughs> so I took the whole program. Oops, I'm sorry. I keep bumping into things. Um, so I got bamboozled. I took the whole program and really kind of just fell in love with the job, mm -hmm. right? But I love to bake. I love to make pastry. And so people who know me will ask, like my mm -hmm. friend Teresa always asks, like, you make some cookies. Like, I really love some cookies. Or is that chocolate frosting? Did you just make that? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so, yeah. Do you have, like, a, one that's, like, your, like, ultimate, that everyone loves, like, your signature dish? Oh, my gosh. I don't know. Um, my signature dish. I don't know that I have a signature dish. You'd have to ask the people to eat my food. Yeah, I think my thing dish. that people crave all year round is my thanksgiving dinner oh like i have a group of like i have always tried to travel mm -hmm. during thanksgiving like i've tried to convince my family like well, let's just take a vacation it's no that way. i my kids literally say no you have to cook dinner oh so you do the whole work i do i have 30 people in my house every year i do the whole dinner from beginning to end nobody brings anything wow i don't trust people so <laughs> You know, you always have that one random person that'll show up with, like, a tiny little dish enough for two people. Yeah. They right? didn't get the memo. Yeah. And I don't want to give them the look. Yeah. yeah. So I'd rather just do it myself. <laughs> That's, I want to go to your Thanksgiving. <laughs> You're welcome to. I do not cook at all. <laughs> I do not step foot in the kitchen. That is my husband's domain. I don't like it. I don't want to look at it. I just want to eat it. I yeah. don't want to do it. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. I make everything from scratch. Nothing's pre-made. The whole dinner from soup to nuts. Do you know how to make scones? I do. Do you know how to make a pumpkin scone? I do. Because I was really, really depressed this fall when Starbucks <laughs> discontinued my favorite thing in the entire world, the pumpkin scone. Well, you might get a delivery. Don't okay. worry. You can recreate that. I'd be very, very grateful. 100%. 100 probably better. <laughs> oh, can't wait. I used to, I used to, like, before they take it out of the package, I would just come and, like, ask for them, like, shipped in. Like, give me all of the packages, and I would just store them and eat them all the time. Oh, that's that hilarious. <laughs> Um, so you were a chef. Okay. So then you went on to a personal trainer. Is that how it went down the line? Yeah. So I couldn't stay in the food business because mm -hmm. I had kids now. I can't work till two o'clock in the morning. My husband is in the TV industry and he's freelancing camera and audio. He's working till two in the morning sometimes. So one of us had to give. So I gave and I stopped cooking and I stayed home with my daughter. I get bored very easily. Mm -hmm. So here she is a year and a half old. I'm like, I got to do something with myself. I'm going to go crazy. So I thought and thought and thought. And I thought, well, next thing I love the most is fitness. Mm -hmm. It's what I've always done in my life. I, was in, I swam in high school and I was on the dive team and I liked to run and I lifted weights my whole life. And so I was always pretty fit and I thought it would be a nice natural fit. Yeah. So I went and got my certification. And became a personal trainer. I worked in a women's gym in Glendale for a while. Oh, wow. Until I couldn't work there anymore. And then I took it home and became an in-home trainer and traveled to my clients' houses. That's incredible. Yeah. Do you still do training now, either personal training or just training for yourself? So, <laughs> I don't look like it, but yeah. <laughs> you look amazing. <laughs> don't second guess yourself. <laughs> I... um. I recently have gone back to the gym and started yeah. lifting again and training again because it's important. Yeah. You have to take care of yourself, especially lifting now. is the thing now, too. It is. You Let's know, get some it used, muscles. It used to be cardio and... Well, because girls were afraid of muscles, yeah. right? Yeah. Now we have tattoos and we have muscles that's and people true. don't care. Yeah. So. That's very, very true. And I, I don't like cardio and I feel really good when I lift weights. I probably wouldn't be able to, you know, outrun or... You know, breathe after anything strenuous, <laughs> but I could lift something high. That's right. It's about strength. You're fine. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> like, I just need to run faster than somebody else. Yes, that's very true. <laughs> and trip them, yeah. right, in the end of the world. Exactly. <laughs> so I did that for probably two and a half years. Okay. I was pretty good at it, and I really enjoyed it. Yeah. yeah. And so that was something you've always been into. You said food and fitness has mm -hmm. been important to you. Weird that I never became, like, a nutritionist. Or, yeah, right? those would go hand in hand. Yeah. No, they're kind of like, counteractive like in the way you're using much. it. <laughs> Pastries and Pilates. Yeah. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> Ooh, somebody used that for something. <laughs> um, so now I'm really excited to talk about your travel magazine that you worked with with your husband, right? 
So I, I, tell me about the magazine, how how it got started, and and how you got to travel the world with it. Yeah, super cool. So it was an online travel magazine. It wasn't paper. Mm -hmm. um, my husband called me one day. Well, so before that is when I was at Metropolitan Water District. Oh, yeah, I missed that one. Yeah, so yeah, that let's was... Yeah, go in order here. That was a weird job, but it was fun. <laughs> um, I worked for the board... That was exciting I, as a magazine. I know, right. I technically worked for the food service company, Okay, but I liaised between the board of directors and the food. It was basically my job was to babysit the buffet so nobody stole the food. Okay. It was really... <laughs> You're a food security guard. <laughs> food security guard. <laughs> and to make sure that none of the board members were without anything, mm -hmm. right? Because they're volunteers. It's the mission of, the, of MWD to make sure their yeah. board members are happy and whatever. So my job was to basically babysit and make sure these people had what they wanted. Mm -hmm. And then... I went home at two o'clock. So that was my day. That's not bad. That's not bad. <laughs> it was an okay job. Um, but so I'm working that job and my husband calls me one day from Las Vegas. He's at a conference and he says, I need you to quit your job and help me with this travel magazine. I met this woman. She's a travel blogger and she wants to do this magazine or this website, blah, blah, blah. I don't know. Think about it. Right. Mm -hmm. So time goes on. Things change between their friendship and she leaves the scene. and. He doesn't know what the hell he's doing because it's not his thing. Yeah. And he asks me to take it over. I never have done social media at that time. Man. I had never, like, I'm not an online, I wasn't an online person. I really hadn't traveled extensively mm -hmm. at that point. I had no concept of what the heck I was stepping into. But sure, no problem. I like you. <laughs> I like how you can just wing it from chef to pastry to traveler. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, <laughs> learning on the fly is one of my yeah. things. Yeah. I just that's I such was, an important yeah. skill to have. Yeah. yeah, I was very I'm very good at that part. But so I said, okay. So I come in, I start kind of learning and talking to our video editor, like what's really the thing. And I said, the first thing we need to do is hire a copy editor because while I can read, I'm not an editor, right? Mm -hmm. So we hire a copy editor and we start garnering submissions from different writers around the world at one point i had over 50 writers around the world who wrote for us for free wow they just wanted their name in, in the yeah magazine. yeah so they would write for us they'd submit their stories some of them which were photographers as well so they'd send these amazing photos some of them did video so we'd post that because it was online it was cool we could do that mm -hmm. and then i started to get asked to travel so I did some really cool things. Like we went to Africa for 20 days. Wow. Did you bring the whole family? Nope. Just you? Thank, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Changes the travel experience a little bit. It can be a lot. <laughs> and the kids were still in school, so yeah. it was like whatever. But Jason and I went to Africa for 20 days, wow. and we had an incredible time. We started in Nairobi, and we did all different kinds of like safari camps. And I mean, that's probably my most favorite trip. Yeah. Because yeah. I saw things that I probably are a once in a lifetime thing, mm -hmm. right? If you have anybody out there listening ever has the opportunity to go to Africa, do not say no. I'll be a travel agent now, right? <laughs> <laughs> now you know where to go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we did that. Um, went to Thailand, and I went wow. to Turkey, and I've been all over Europe, and you know, just. And, and how long was this span when you were doing all these traveling for? for about six years. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So. The blogger showed up mm. on the scene and it mm. just killed yeah. what I was doing yeah. because they were doing stuff for free, yeah. right? And then now how am I going to generate income? So the last big project we did, I was very proud of. We did, um, you know, when you're sitting in an airplane and the back of your seat has a TV and you see all those ads or yeah. videos about the destination you're going to. We did that with Hawaiian Airlines. Oh, awesome. I don't know if they're still playing or not, but yeah. we had like six different videos that we did that they played in flight on Hawaiian Airlines. Mm -hmm. And it was us and we had a host and we walked through Hawaii and we had, <clears throat> excuse me, Hawaiian Airlines um, flight attendants mm -hmm. touring us around their part of Hawaii that they're from. Oh, wow. And showing us like their favorite thing. Yeah. And it was really cool. So we went to the Big Island, and we went to Lanai, and we went to Oahu, and we went all over Hawaii. It was really beautiful. Did you bring your kids to any of them? I took my oldest daughter to Italy with me once, oh, okay. but it was so run and gun mm -hmm. that it was really hard to, to tow kids along. Yeah, yeah. You know, when you're working, 
it's a very different type of travel yeah. than traveling for leisure. Yeah. Yeah. And so that that went away. You, well, you said the blogger scene hit, and so mm-hmm. that dissolved, right? Right. In 2015. Okay. Yeah. And then now, for your current career, <laughs> was this an easy transition? Was there time in between before you became a realtor? There was time in between. I don't know how long. Um, probably two years. Okay. Yeah, there's probably like a two-year gap where I just kind of sat in my husband's office and helped him with marketing and advertising for yeah. his company and tried to figure out what the heck I wanted to do. Yeah. And then I got super bored again, and I called my realtor, who's now my business partner, mm-hmm. Mike McDonald, and I said, hey, I think I want to get my real estate license. And he just kind of chuckled, was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, bored housewife, go get your license. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I was like, oh, okay. So I went and got my license and he's like, well, I'll mentor you for like your first five deals and teach you the ropes. And then you're going to go on your own uh-huh. and see you later, kid. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So I get my license and I show up to work and I'm ready to ro- work, you know? And yeah. I have a hard work ethic. Like I will do the job. Mm-hmm. Soup to nuts. Like no problem. And he didn't know this yet, you know, because he sold us houses, but we weren't like, we didn't hang out. So he didn't really yeah. know me. So um, I started working and I started making deals. And in my first year, I sold 13 houses. Wow. And he was like, oh, you're doing pretty good. You should stick around a little longer. You want a partner? (laughs) Amazing. (laughs) And now how many years has it been as a partnership? Um, Here, make me do math. Uh, (laughs) 1920, So eight years. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. And so you've been, you know, here in Burbank selling houses for eight years. Mm -hmm. Um, and what have you learned, just learned about Burbank or learned about yourself now in this transition as a realtor? Oh, that's a hard question. It's a good question. It's a hard question. Uh, what have I learned about myself? I've learned that I am not afraid of people or situations. Mm -hmm. You know, I've always kind of been very confident, but when you're dealing transactionally with people and there's a lot of money on the line and sometimes you have to say the thing, Yeah. right? Not all people can say the thing. And they always kind of beat around the bush. Yeah. Mike laughs. He's like, I've never seen somebody like you walk in the house and be like, so sign the contract. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get this done. I got places to be. TikTok friend. We I got pastries go. to make and I got to work out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he goes, but you get the job done, you yeah. know, and I'm not harsh and brash with people, but I'm like, I'm here to serve you. Mm-hmm. Let me do my job to the best of my ability. Yeah. You know, so I really... I'm very dedicated. You can probably talk to any one of my clients and they'll tell you how dedicated I am to them. They think they're my only client. Yeah. That's how hard I work for people. Well, you seem to prove that in everything that you do, you go full force into it. So that's pretty incredible (laughs) characteristic. Yeah. No, that's a really great characteristic. Hopefully, no one will listen to this and take you in to do something else. (laughs) Sign you up for something. Don't listen. I think at this point, it'd be kind of hard. Yeah. I I enjoy real estate a lot. I enjoy it. It's it's interesting enough that I'm not getting bored. Yeah. I'm dealing with enough different people all the time. Different locations. Yeah, different locations. Plus, Mike and I have started a property management company. Oh, okay. So we also do that. So I'm in between the two. I'm busy all day, every day. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. And and you have been loving your community through real estate, like mm-hmm. sponsoring podcasts. And what are some other things that you have been able to do and love your city through this job? So, you know, the holiday and Halloween map. Yeah. I sponsor that. Oh, amazing. Yeah, I sponsored her for the, ho- for the holiday part. Yeah. Year, Cause I, I was watching it through the hol- through the Halloween stuff and she works her tail off. She Jennifer. Does. Yeah. She, she does. really does. And this isn't like her job. This yeah. is just her passion. Yeah. Right. So she has a whole full time job that she's working Mm -hmm. and she's doing this thing and people are coming at her kind of hard a little bit. And I was watching it. I was like, eh, she needs some she needs some support. Right. Mm -hmm. So I reached out to her and we kind of became friends on social media. And I said, hey, do you want to sponsor? I'm happy to help you because she's coming out of pocket 100 percent on this stuff. Yeah. You You don't realize that it costs money to put that on. That's a really complicated map that she's working with. It's a lot of money, too. It's not just like pennies. Right. Yeah. So I sponsored her because I thought, let's lighten your load. You're doing a cool thing that the community loves. Yeah. Let's do it. So I sponsored her, you know, I did that for her. And then um, we do a community garage sale, mm-hmm. all, all of Burbank. Okay. Not just one neighborhood or whatever. So it's 
the Burbank Community Garage Sale, and this is our second year doing it. And the reception has been amazing. The people that participate are like, oh my gosh, you guys do so much for us. And Aww. I go to every single house and I meet every single oh property gosh. owner and I say, thank you for you know participating and yeah. what can I get for you? And we give them signs and we give them bags and we give them stickers and Whatever you, they need. Do you need. take the stuff after they're done, like help organize like a pickup of their leftover stuff? Yep. That's amazing. Yep. Well, I did last year with Kiwanis. I don't know oh, okay. who's doing it this year. I'll have to figure that out. Yeah. yeah. It's really cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's really fun. I enjoy it. I just like meeting people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So is this, this career has been your longest out of the different things that you've done? <clears throat> um, no, I would say it's pretty tied with food. Okay. Like food, food, I've always kind of come back and forth into, yeah. you know what I mean? So in one aspect or another, when I left the food industry to have kids, I still worked privately for a couple in Burbank as their personal chef. Oh, wow. So I did that for a long time. And then I, you know, get requests here and there. Can yeah. you make us a wedding cake? Can you make us, you know, whatever. Yeah, so I still yeah. kind of kept my hand in. Yeah. Yeah. That's something, it's a trade you can have forever, which is nice. Yeah. I'm telling you, it was the best piece of advice I ever got in my entire life was from my grandmother. Well, she gave me two pieces of advice. The first piece was <laughs> learn a trade because you can work anywhere in the world wherever you end up, right? So That's very true. I learned to cook and people always got to eat. That's 100%. Always have a job. The other piece of advice she gave me was play the field. <laughs> <laughs> Did you throw, that one's done though, right? <laughs> yeah. Sorry, honey. <laughs> That's really cute. She sounds like a fun lady. She was. <laughs> So the words to the wise, that is, that's your takeaway from today. 100%. Learn to trade and play the field. <laughs> Are you listening? <laughs> All the youngings out there. Exactly. Um, well, just tell me a little bit about, I mean, your real estate endeavor and, and what, what are the trends going on right now? What's the housing market? I know nothing about this. Mm. So if you want to just give our listeners kind of where we're at in Burbank, what it's looking like and sure. how it feels. Um, I think every realtor kind of has a different perspective. Mm -hmm. So you might hear different stories. Uh, my perspective is this. The city is not going anywhere. Our property values are not going anywhere. I think for a little bit, they're going to sit stagnant, right? Things are taking longer to sell, especially mm -hmm. at a higher price point like Burbank. Burbank, anything a million over, people are just kind of waiting, they're yeah. waiting to see what the game is going to be, right? So it's just taking longer right now. It's not that they're not selling. Yeah. Um, I think price points are going to stay the same. I don't really see much change. I think interest rates are going to drop. I've been talking to a couple of our lenders. They're thinking that they're going to drop a point or two. Okay. But I will say this. This is my one piece of advice that I've been giving all my buyers. Because they're all coming at me like, when's the rate going to go back down to 2 and 2.5%? Two and Probably never. Yeah. Probably not until we have another crisis. Yeah. Everyone forgets that that interest rate was to stimulate the economy. Mm -hmm. That's what our government told us, right? We're going to lower the interest rates. We're going to stimulate the economy. We're going to get home sales up. People are going to be able to buy houses. And then it went back to normal. What you guys see now is called a normal interest rate. Oh, man. <laughs> and what is it now? Like six and a quarter. Oh, man. So anything between five and seven. I would almost feel lucky to have, okay. right? So because there's no waiting. Like, just do it now. There's no thinking. waiting. And, and here's, the, here's the thing that's going to bite people in the rear end is you can wait for interest rates to drop over buying the house now at a, at a time where you're not going to have the competition like we had during COVID, mm -hmm. right? There's less competition. Housing prices are not going astronomical. They're staying where they're at. You can probably offer asking price and get your offer accepted. And while you're still paying an interest rate, there's a saying, marry the house, date the rate. Because mm. you can always refinance if it drops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? People have to understand that if you don't buy now and you wait and you wait and you wait, you're going to lose tens of thousands of dollars worth of equity in the home that you could have bought. So instead of making money, you're losing money. It's a really important lesson to learn. Yeah. And, and I know people that have waited five years to buy a house because they just think at some point they're going to get this great deal. Yeah. And they're just non-committal or they're afraid. Yeah. Yeah. That's really what it is. Got to jump in the water. 
Yeah. So buy the house now. Don't yeah. wait. <laughs> yeah. Who knows what things are going to be like in a few years? I'm, I'm always the jump in and figure it out later kind of girl. It's better to do it that way sometimes, <laughs> yeah. you know, just bite the bullet. Yeah. You have to, if you, especially if you want to get in the housing market. Yeah. So what do you see Burbank looking like in the next five to 10 years, not just in houses, but just like in, you know, the way it's being built and, you know, growing. I mean, you're really in the city. You see yeah. it. You see all the areas. You see the development. So I see a lot of things and I hear a lot of things. I know, mm -hmm. you know, I have a lot of conversations with people. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of development I think people aren't aware of. Mm -hmm. It's been, it's in the works, you know, it's in conversation. Um, what do I see? I see a lot of people getting scared because high density is coming. I don't think there's a way around it, right? Um, people don't understand that if the city doesn't grow and develop, the state's going to do it for us. So we have to make decisions as a community instead of allowing outsiders to make those decisions for us. Yeah, control over it. Do I agree with every decision that's made? No. You know, look at the rancho. Right. Pickwick went away. Now it's being developed into multi unit housing and people are losing their minds over it. Should it have happened? I don't know. Is it a good thing for the city? I think so. Is it a good thing for the rancho? Probably not. Yeah. Right. Because it just means what? More traffic and less opportunity to ride your horse without getting hit by a car. Right. So there's pros and cons to everything. I think the city is going to go through a major attitude adjustment. We have a lot of new people in this town that aren't from here. Mm -hmm. Back in the day, 20, 30 years ago, people that lived here were from here. And now there's all these people who've migrated here from yeah. other states or from other cities in California because of the industry, because of Netflix, because of Amazon, because of whatever. And it's a different mindset being brought into a town that has a very old school mindset. Yeah. Right? So it's just going to need an attitude adjustment. Yeah. That may take five to 10 years mm -hmm. or longer, mm -hmm. you know, and there's going to be so much multi-unit housing development yeah. that it's freaking people out. Yeah. You can't drive anywhere without seeing a, a building being worked on yeah. and built and they're popping up so quick. And I think the city's really trying to keep up the infrastructure, mm -hmm. but I don't know how they're, I don't know how that's going to work. I don't know how yeah. that's going to play out because we are a grid system that's set in stone. You know, and unless you make some major radical route changes, yeah, I don't see how that's going to happen. Yeah. You know? Yeah, we're in definitely in a growth stage right now. For sure. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But I think it's, at the end of the day, it's what needs to happen. Yeah. Growth is scary. Mm -hmm. Change is scary. Yeah. But yeah. Everyone will adapt. Yeah. I agree. I think so. It's just an attitude adjustment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of um, attitude um, or um, mental health. <laughs> Oh, I was no. talking to you about this earlier. <laughs> I wanted to bring it up um, because I've been seeing you on Facebook posting these videos talking about yourself and, you know, feelings and, and mental uh, <laughs> load and things like that. And, um, you know, you said your friends are checking in on you a little bit. So can you tell me what those videos are about? Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> um, so I am not a big sharer of all things me. Um, so when I do share, people get concerned. Yeah. So I've been, I, I take a, I work with a coach, his name's Sean Whalen, and he owns the Lion's Den is what it's called. And he is just no BS, and he does things that make you uncomfortable to mm -hmm. get you comfortable, yeah. right? So one of the challenges was a 30-day video challenge. You have to do 30 videos, and you have to talk about who you are and what you do. Okay. Well, I can only talk so much about real estate. In those, For 30 days, yeah. because yeah. that's a lot. <laughs> it's ridiculous. So you have to start getting deep. Yeah, yeah. So I'm starting to get deep. And it's so uncomfortable and Aww. awful, but it's been very good for me. Yeah. Kind of cathartic, mm -hmm. right? It makes you think about things a little bit, put things in a perspective. Um, I have talked about everything from when my mom died tragically mm -hmm. to um, today I talked about being an interest, uh, being an investor in real estate. I mean, just a broad yeah. range of things. What day are you on out of the 30? Every day. So for 30 days. For when 30 did you days. start? 17 days ago. Oh, so you're like midway. You're yeah. Little, yeah, you've, you're over the peak. I'm over the hump. Yeah. <laughs> so. That's reassuring. I've actually made people make lists for me because I don't know what yeah. left, what's left to talk about, right? So it's been interesting, though. It's a, yeah. it's a good experiment. It's a good social experiment. I've enjoyed it. The feedback I've gotten has been really interesting. Yeah. I, had to po I posted something the other day about a personal thing that happened to me, and the feedback on that one was really interesting. Like, 
you know, you get the gossipy gossips. They want to call like, what happened? And I'm not going to tell them because it's none of their business, but it's just, it's very interesting, the yeah. feedback that comes back, you know? Yeah. yeah. I, that's what I was going to ask you is how the response has been and how has, it, how has it helped you through the processes, you know, hearing the responses? It's good because it, well, it's motivating, right? Mm-hmm. Because people call me like, oh my God, I totally get what you're talking about today. Yeah. You know? You feel a little less alone. A little less alone. And I think people are, I'll get text messages like, wow, I watched your video today. It's been really great. I've watched all your videos. It's been so interesting to learn more about yeah. you. So it's it's good. They're on Facebook? Facebook and Instagram. Okay. I, is it a public profile? Mm-hmm. Okay. So everyone can come learn more about you. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, how many days left do you have? 13 more days? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. <laughs> so let, let us know what you want to hear about. Um, well, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for coming here, talking about all these amazing things that you've been a part of. You're such an inspiration to the city and your community. And um, it's inspiration to me because I, you know, as a person who loves to go full force in and, and take charge and change my career path, you know, 70 times, mm-hmm. I am that same way. I get bored and I, I want to find new opportunities. And I always tell my kids, you don't have to just be one thing when you grow up. When they say, what do you want to be when you grow up? It's it's never really just one thing. You're going to be a lot of things, and that's okay. And um, it's really cool to hear your story and how you've transitioned to all these amazing things. So Aww. thank you for being here. You're very welcome. I also I want to say one thing. Yeah. I started real estate and changed my career at 43 years old. Mm-hmm. You guys can do anything you want. Don't let anybody make you feel like you're too old to do something or too young to do something or you're not good enough to do something. Do what you want to do, when you want to do it, how you want to do it. Make your own rules. Yeah. Because I've lived by my own rules my whole life. I'm one of five kids. I'm the last of five kids. Mm. And, you know, I watched all my siblings grow up and they went to college and my brother became an officer and, you know, all these things. I didn't live by any of those standards. Yeah. I just didn't. I did made my own rules. I did what I wanted when I wanted. And I've always been like that. Very so. freeing. It and is. it's also like, what's next? It's the excitement of life. Like you never know what is going to come your way, what opportunities. And sometimes doors have to close to let new ones open. Right? 100%. 100%. So yeah. it's really you're cool. You're never too old to do anything. Yeah. I love that. Get on it. <laughs> Whatever you're thinking in your head right now that you wanted to start, that this is your sign to start it. 100%. Yeah. Be an entrepreneur. There's nothing better. Oh, there's pros and cons. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the fact that you work 24-7. Yeah. You work yeah. you work a lot, you know, but it's worth it. It's yeah. worth it to be able to make your own decisions and not get told what to do all 100%. the time. Yeah. Yay. Well, thank you. Well, thank you guys for listening to another episode of Women of Burbank. I'll see you guys next time. My Burbank Talks would like to thank all of My Burbank's advertisers for their continued support. Burbank Water and Power, Usamano Real Estate Group, UMI Credit Union, Burbank Chamber of Commerce, Game Credit Union, Providence St. Joseph Medical Center, Community Chevrolet, Media City Credit Union, UCLA Health, Tequila's Burbank, Logics Credit Union, Hill Street Cafe, Bertain Escobar Wealth Management, and the UPS Store on 3rd Street.